G'day everyone, welcome to Organic Power. A big thanks to all the viewers that are continuously tuning into the channel and all the members getting on board. In today's episode, we're going to be wiring another 10.1 kilowatt hours into the bank. That'll bring the total to 55 kilowatt hours. Should be a good boost to the system. Before we get started with the battery upgrade, I'll give you a quick rundown on how the system's been performing over the last two years. We've got the initial date till today's date there. Scroll down a bit further, it'll show you the total of the solar. There's to the battery and direct use, so it's 38,727 kilowatt hours. I'll bring up a calculator, we'll enter that in. There's going to be a few losses, but we'll take that off at the end. So 38,727 times by how much we pay for power here, which is 34 cents a kilowatt hour. It's 13,167 Australian dollars. So let's call that $11,000. The system has just about half paid for itself. Another two years time, it will have paid itself back by the amount of energy we've saved. We're now using the equivalent of $2,000 a quarter due to the free energy the system provides. Here's the battery bank we're gonna be wiring into the circuit. Give us that little bit more storage for those cloudy days so we can continue using the air conditioning and heating. Kick back and relax. Keep your favorite drink. We'll show you exactly how to set up the cabling, crimp the lugs on, connect everything up. Got four new batteries and some cable, a few lugs and some heat shrink. I'm gonna uh, mount the batteries on this shelf here, wire it all up. First of all, going to screw some cement sheet to the back of that shelving. So let's get stuck into it. There's the first piece of cement sheet cut. Now put the other bit on top here. We'll mark that and cut that piece. I've got all the pieces of cement sheet cut now. Got our four shelves, a top, the back and two sides. I'll use the self-drilling screws to attach it now. That's got the back and one side attached. Carry on, do the other end and stick the shelves in. All right, there's the shelves complete. Got the cement sheeting over the top of the timber there and also around the back and the sides. That way no heat will pass between the uh, tin and the batteries. Keep them nice and cool, or as cool as we can. We'll uh, get ready to chuck a couple on the shelf now. Start wiring it up. Take a look at the rest of the channel while you're here. There's plenty of info on how to connect up the battery banks, the inverters, MPPTs, and also all of the solar arrays. I've got the batteries up on the rack running the cables from the new set of batteries over to the original banks. There's the negative, and there's the positive. That'll swing around, bolt on there. And this one will feed out the back there, bolt that straight on. Then we need to drill a hole down through the center there and combine that top bank to the bottom bank. I've drilled a 25mm hole through the board. I can put a cable between the top and bottom bank now. Make sure you use a good pair of cutters when cutting this welding flex. Hold the blade square with the cable. Have a nice neat end on there. I've stripped the outer insulation off each of the ends. Just long enough for the tunnel of the lug. I've also scored really carefully that inner insulation. You've got to be very careful so you don't damage those fine strands. They will snap off. Leave the dough on there until you're ready to crimp. 
because once they fluff up it's hard to get back into the lug keep it nice and neat until you're ready to uh, crimp them on now I'll crimp them on one at a time got the hydraulic crimper there 70 mil die that's a uh, just a cheapy 16 ton hydraulic crimper so I'll crimp them on using that and they'll be ready to bolt up once you peel the inner layer off carefully feed the strands in make sure you don't bend any back or snap any off and then you're ready to slide that on and crimp it up make sure it's all the way to the end of the tunnel and you're good to go start crimping down the palm end, this is the palm of the lug and work your way back this way that's how we get taught to do it at trade school when you're an electrician Alright, I finished crimping everything, got all the lugs on, grab a file now and just tidy up these little burrs here, just gently, so the heat shrink doesn't get uh, cut when you shrink it down on there. I'll cut some red and black heat shrink now, cover the ends of the lugs. Got my six pieces of shrink, three red and three black. We'll slide them on, shrink them down. When you heat it up and shrink it down, you want to make sure the shrink doesn't go onto this palm surface here, that'll interfere with the joint.
I've got all the connections at the top bolted up. And down the bottom, I've cut a high tensile bolt down to 50 mil, screw that into the top of the battery and fasten a nut. That'll become my positive for the A and L fuse. I've completed the cabling between the existing battery bank and the new battery bank. This is the parallel connection that runs up to the fuses. There's a fuse on the positive and the negative. I have an easily removable A and L fuse on the positive and a battery terminal fuse on the negative. In between the batteries is your series connection. Now that I've finished the cabling, I've put the lids back on those banks there. I'll get some of that mesh and screw it to the front of the new shelf. The shed's always locked, but I'd rather there's no access to the terminals. I've hooked up this battery equaliser just temporarily. It's an older version. They're okay, but they do squeal a bit. There's a high frequency squeal that comes out of them. I'm not sure if you can hear it. It can be a little bit annoying, so I've got the new one on order. These have a uh, LED display on the front as well. So once that's come in, we'll finish off wiring that in properly. These battery equalizers are capable of passing 10 amps between one battery and the other, keeping the voltages all at the same level. Stay tuned for the episode coming up, where we wire the new unit into the circuit. Thanks for watching everyone, hope you enjoyed that episode, it's given us another 10 kilowatt hours, so we're about just over 50 now, that'll be plenty for summer, have the air conditioning running all the time, not a problem.